Fan Cup 2023 has been absolutely fantastic. We are now at the last eight stage. We've seen goals galore, got 79, and we are hoping to see even more. Speaking about those goals, I think more than anything today, we are here to announce our Net Bank Cup 2023 ambassadors. And these ambassadors definitely are game changers. They make good financial decisions and have entertained us throughout our South African footballing life. So without further ado, I think it's only right to call up NetBank's Kinsani Nobanda to elaborate to us exactly why we're here today and what we can expect from the NetBank Cup 2023 campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, please a round of applause. Thank you, Tato. Morning, everyone. Actually, I can't stand and hold it. I think I can cope. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning, everyone. I was actually saying to my team as I got here that I've never been to Konka. I've heard a lot about it. And the first time I come is in the morning. I think it's such a missed opportunity. <laughs> so greetings to everyone present today from NetBank, from our partners, the PSL, um, to our ambassadors, Coach Pito, Tiko Modises, Piva Chabalala, Dane Clayton, Stanton Fredericks, to our clients, and most importantly, of course, to the media. Thank you for joining us such an early morning in Soweto. The 2023 NetBank Cup campaign is built on the sentiment that small, everyday choices can actually have the biggest impact on our lives. We're going to bring this partnership to, we're going to bring this to life through our partnership with an industry legend that audiences respect, listen to, relate to, and who can show that through the choices that he has made, he's been a success himself. Based on different circumstances and decisions, he could have pursued an alternative career, and we'll show you a lovely 30-second TV ad that shows some of those career choices. But he chose a career in football, and today is one of the most respected and decorated coaches, um, Pizzo Mosimane. <laughs> I wanted people to clap. <laughs> so through a video content, um, what we're going to show is we're going to show Pizzo using his experience in football to talk about, you know, to fans, how do you make better choices and show how decisions, whether big or small throughout your career, have turned him into actually one of the biggest successes in South African football. We've also selected the cream of the crop from a football perspective to support the campaign. As I've said, we've got Deco, Dane, Stanton and Spiwe. They, together with Coach Pizzo, will be at the front line of this campaign, where they will be sharing their stories of the small decisions that have made the biggest impact for them and provide insights on development of the field of play as we go through the last eight teams to the final winner of the NEPEC Cup 2023. We are absolutely delighted to get this campaign off the ground through our partnerships and we hope that the ambassadors will be able to equip, empower and educate our fans with the knowledge that helps them make the most optimal decisions in their lives. So the campaign will run from now quarterfinals until the actual end of the footballing season. We would like to thank our partners, the PSL and the media, of course, for attending. And a special thank you to our ambassadors for agreeing to go on this exciting journey with us. The aim of this campaign is to get people to start today. Whatever it is that they want to achieve is based on the small decisions that they make on a daily basis. But the main point is to start and to start today. If I talk about the football side, as only eight teams remain in the 16th edition of the Nepal Cup, I'm sure the quarterfinals are sure to continue to bring South Africans the, entertainer, the entertaining knockout football that they love. We're still looking for those David Goliath moments as we continue to get to the end of Nepal Cup. I'm excited to see um, where we end up and who the winner of the 16th edition is. I hope you enjoyed today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Kenzie. 
Well, we always know that when it comes to NetBank, they definitely make great money decisions and always looking after our footballers and football. And when it comes to these footballers, they've entertained us, they've made us dance over weekends and midweek. Others have made us say, yo, them that what they've been showing us so far. So let's welcome our first panel of footballers to discuss those small decisions that they've made to get to where they are today. A warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our legends and, of course, our ambassadors for the NetBank Cup 2023 campaign. It is Teko Dodamurisa. That is your name. Stanton Fredericks. Dane Clayton. And Sipiwe Chavalani. <laughs> Gentlemen, first off, uh, thank you so much for joining us and of course, uh, really, really happy to have you here as our NetBank Cup 2023 ambassadors. We're all talking about those small decisions that we have made in our football, in our financial decisions that get you to be where you are today. Footballing legends of the South African game, the African game, and of course, internationally. Let me start with you, uh, CPU. Those decisions that you've made, uh, that made a change in your career, what are those? Yeah, uh, thank you, Tata. Good morning to everyone. Yeah, I, I think when it, when it comes to um, you know, the um, money decisions, um, that I've made, um, I think it boils down to one thing, uh, principle and, and discipline. And it's not how much uh, you make um, that you need to save. So I started saving when I was still at um, Free State Stars because um, I was away from home. So the reason also for me to start saving then was because I learned the hard way, you know, um, I finished all my salary, uh, you know, and I had to wait. So I had to borrow money so that I can uh, cover uh, the few weeks left. So I learned from then that uh, the importance of, of saving. So since then, you know, I started uh, saving, I started um, being disciplined as well. You know, the funny thing is, uh, this very morning, you speaking about your very first salary at Free State Stars. And Tepo, I remember you calling it a stipend. And not a salary. But, but speaking about those financial decisions, those important footballing decisions that you've made as well, Donna, to get to where you are, what are those, especially listening to what Sipiwa had said about needing to save at a very young, early age to get to where he is today? Uh, for me, talk about my experience, um, good morning, everybody. Um, I think that the, the small change that I did was to to start respecting money. Because where I come from, we're not taught how to use money. And besides, man, we grew up in a society where people don't know much about money, so they can't teach you about something that they don't have. So once you get an opportunity to start making money, um, I was the guy that made the most mistakes. Um, I had um, pretty cars at some point for no reason. And uh, the, the same guy, coach, um, used to fight me a lot about it. And, and, and I remember him saying, calling me into the office right, to tell me about, explaining to me about money. And you know, uh, when Coach Peter is angry, you don't want to, you know, you know, you don't want to be in the same room as him. And he started telling me about the importance of, of taking care of my money, making sure that uh, I understand that the football career is very short, and I need to take my money very seriously. And, and I think for me, the biggest change that I did was just to listen. Once I started listening, then from there, then I started taking my money seriously. I started making better decisions because of um, allowing myself to listen to, to people that actually walk the path. Stiga, my next question comes to you. Uh, unfortunately, in the South African terrain, when it comes to money and football players and retaining it, it, it sometimes feels like a relationship between oil and water. What kind of decisions did you make to make sure that they go hand in hand together? Yeah, good morning everybody. So um, I know it's in the morning, um, everybody's a bit uh, still waking up. 
So thanks for joining us. Let's give ourselves a round of applause, please, for being here. Yeah, just to add on to, to that question there, um, Tato, what Shaba and Teko says is that most footballers, we come from humble beginnings. And uh, in, your, in the homes that we grew up in, there's very little point of reference where money was used wisely. So we come from poor homes. So when you fall into the trap, and I call it a trap for a reason, because in the footballing world, there's expectations put onto you when you become a professional footballer. You need to drive a good car, you need to have the girls, uh, you need to move to the northern suburbs, you know, and, and you put yourself under pressure. And it, we're all human beings. And when you fall into that trap, it's important to learn that Teko says, you will fall into that trap. You make uh, those mistakes, but you need to learn from those mistakes. And I think one decision that, that I made is that um, when I moved to Kaiser Chiefs, the thought crossed my mind of buying the second car. You know, and, and fortunately, I had friends around me that would advise me correctly. And the one guy, without telling me what to do, he says, do you really need that car? You know, and I speak about those decisions that changes um, your journey in terms of managing your money. And that is when I, I thought, a second thought before spending it, before getting that second car, maybe I should then buy an uh, a investment uh, townhouse, you know. So for me, the one moment for me was that decision. If you, if you go into that, a car is a depreciating situation. And then you need that somebody next to you to say, listen, this is the way to go. This is going to be a better decision. And, and for me, there's so many decisions that I had to make, but that was one that really stood out for me. You, you, you know, you talk about buying that second car, moving to the north, and those pressures that we all go through, especially as young footballers. And Dane, I know you work a lot with young footballers who want to emulate and at least get some of the accolades, if just one, <laughs> that you've been decorated with. But here's another question that off ramps just a little bit. Had you not gotten into football, what would you have done? I know you're a cricketer, <laughs> but what would you have done? Uh, good morning to everybody. Um, yeah, what would I have done? I think uh, at, when I got to grade 8, I was really, really good at accounting. I got 100% in my first year in accounting. So obviously the school thought I could have gone on and, and, and obviously studied accounting. There was already plans of me applying for bursaries and whatever because I'm from Portillas, but humble beginnings as Stig has said. First generation to earn money, you know, and a lot of hard lessons. But uh, I think if there's, if, there's, if, there's, if there's one thing for me, uh, that I've learned over, over the time, and maybe just to go off the topic again, when I was 20 years old, because uh, Pizzo was my coach, and I bought my first townhouse, but he needed to know where, he needed to know how much, he needed to know who else is staying in that complex. So we got that kind of guidance from a very, very young age. Um, but still, I think um, if I didn't play football, definitely I would have probably studied accounting if I wasn't a cricketer as well. So I had options. It really seems like uh, this NetBank Cup 2023 Ambassadors campaign is a marriage made in heaven because you're all talking about the influence that Coach Peter has had on you and those small financial decisions that actually paid forward to where you are today. And coming back to you, Dane, again, with, with the young footballers, we hear about buying that second car, the second townhouse. Are, are, are those financial decisions that younger footballers are still making today or has the terrain changed a bit when it comes to younger footballers? Are they financially cognizant of what they're doing? If I look around, I think some are really looking after their money, others are not. I think we, we're living in a, in a generation now where it's difficult for everybody. You know, uh, life gets really, really tough, the economy is taking a big knock. So I think the living now and the putting away for the future, there's a balance in that. You know, um, what, I, what I've learned now is that I could have driven a Polo 1.2 all my life and uh, the petrol wasn't, wasn't going to be that expensive instead of buying a big car that takes a lot of petrol and pays more money. You know, so those are the things that we can impart to the younger ones and say, listen, one day you will drive that car. You know, but for now, be, be economical. You know, um, drive a car that doesn't use a lot of petrol. that can last, the tank can last you the whole week. So basically you can do two to three tanks instead of doing five, six tanks, and that's just a mistake. Maybe, for me personally, I made. I drove a big car while I was still playing, 
you know, where I could have just driven, every day going to training, just driven normal polo back home and, 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 and there. And then later on in life, um, I'm able to reward. The rewards later on will be much, much bigger. But you know, I love the fact that you did mention that mistakes, even though financial and they could be detrimental, are human. Um, yeah, but coming back to financial mistakes that we've all made here in this room and also as footballers, how do you then get over those mistakes and manage your finances better after learning from those mistakes? I guess, I guess for me it's just to, it's when you start respecting money, when you start putting, realizing how valuable it is. Because for me to, to get to understand it is because of what I went through, the, all the mistakes that I've done. Um, now you, like I said earlier on, the three cars, that you don't, now you start making excuses of all the mistakes you've done. Like I need a, one car for during the week, the other one is for weekend, the other one is for family. Don't forget the other one to come to Konka. I've never been to Konka, it's my first time. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you start justifying um, all these mistakes that you're doing and, um, and because of also the social pressures of playing for certain certain teams, you're expected to drive a certain car, you're expected to live in certain areas, so you end up living beyond your means and that becomes a trap that Steve has spoke about that every footballer, um, majority of footballers fall into, but also because we didn't have any reference from the former footballers themselves who come and teach us better because of every generation changes, the salaries changes, the opportunities changes. So therefore, I think uh, with this opportunity, I think for us is, is, is to try and educate as much as we can to the younger ones, um, hoping that they will actually listen to us uh, because that's a challenge as well. I was one of those players as well when I thought I knew it all and uh, it took me, I took a really, really serious knock for me to start listening to people in terms of the money because those who are in football, they know that in 2010, people probably may be thinking I'm making, I made a lot of money, but I made a lot of mistakes within that period of time because everything came at once. And uh, nobody teaches how to handle money until you actually lost it. And, um, and I remember losing all the money, then I had to start from scratch. And I think that's starting from scratch was the blessing in disguise for me because even till today, I respect the money, I respect the value of money, and I know that I don't need to buy certain things because I want the money to buy things that I need. And for, for, for a person in, in, in the situation that I'm in, I'm very fortunate to be able to get an opportunity to, to listen to people that I were giving advice for free. And then, like you said, uh, Coach Peter was one of those guys that actually set me down, not once, not twice. 15 times. I'm telling you. So, so it was a very, I, was, I was a very difficult person to get um, message through because, because of also the, the background that I'm coming from. So for me, it's about trust. I need to trust you for you to tell me about money. There's a lot of, in football, there's a lot of people that come through and teach you about money. But the fact that they come in wearing a suit like us, face that I don't know, I'm thinking this one is here to take my money. But when you've been told by somebody that you work with every day, because you're working with Coach Pito, you see more than you see your own family. So and for me to, to be able to get into that room and start listening and start having those open conversations, because Speaking money in, in football, it's, it's a no-no. Nobody speaks about their salaries in football, but to speak to a person that actually gave me an opportunity to play, it became for me an eye-opener. And ever since uh, those lessons that I've learned, I'm, I'm using them and I'm applying them in everyday life. Well, a little nugget. Uh, my financial advisor is on the panel, and I listen to everything that he says. I'm still broke, though. <laughs> Thank you, Stiga. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you are very financially sound, and that's one thing I want people to know about you, Stiga. Um, what, what, what made you so financially sound? Of course you played in Russia, handling different currencies, but you really have been one footballer who I look up to because of the way you handle your finances post-football. What was catalyst today? You know, Tato, it's, it's important to find a balance, and then spoke about balance. When you work hard, you need to reward yourself. So that doesn't mean you can't buy yourself a luxurious car, but it, but it must make sense. You cannot, as Teko also mentioned, live beyond your means. You, are, you need to understand your affordability. Like your, your car, and this is the basics of finance, which I think I've kind of grasped. Your car can't, you can't be paying more for your car than your house, you know? There's certain basics that you need to stick within, and I think, um, 
Whilst playing at the latter stages of my career, I started being more cognizant of how I spend and where I spend, and I was I was a bit I was more stingy. You know, you're not helping this friend. This auntie needs this. Yeah, <laughs> so, and and it's important, and, and it speaks about respect. Respect money because as a footballer, there's there's the perception that you work for two hours and you get paid a lot of money, but when you do it right, you're a 24 hour professional. You know, and then when football ends, you now have to work hard to earn a little. But you're starting over, you know. So it's important that that understanding and the fundamentals of financial literacy starts at an early age. All right, Sipiwe, um, you know, when Dago was talking about 2010, uh, all that pressure, all that money coming in, being the focus, focal point of everybody's footballing best memory, and that's you. How do you then handle um, the money that comes in, the pressure that comes in, to still remain the same Sipiwe Tutem Nati Shabalala that we know, whilst um, you know the world is seeing this massive Goliath? I think it's, it's, it, you know, it boils down to uh, principle, like I said before, and also discipline, you know, um, the guys have said it and also share the same sentiment with them about respecting money. And they usually say that if you take care of the sense, the hands will take care of themselves. So try and you know in, invest um, as much and as best um, as you can. And with me, I, I started planning um, life after football in the beginning. So when I started, that's when I, you know, I started planning for, for my exit because I knew at some point, you know, there'll be there'll be rainy days. And when it comes to, to investing, I started early as well. You know, you you try here and there, and you get your fingers bent. But the good thing is you you are able to recover because you still have time, unlike starting at the end. And the same as well, you know, someone advise you and say, um, buy property and then it ends there. You know, not um, necessarily explaining to you what kind of investment um, uh, you're putting yourself into. You know, whether is it at the right place, is it the right time to buy a property? And sometimes you can buy a property, not pay it off and end up losing it as well. You can buy a property, pay it off, um, rent it out and still not make more money out of it because there's still money that comes out from, from that pro uh, property. So it, it's important that we, we learn, we, we seek you know, advice from, from professionals as well. And um, the good thing is that NetBank is here and it's giving us you know, that platform, that opportunity as well to speak finances, not only uh, footballers, um, this topic speaks to everyone in the room, you know, because we all make uh, financial mistakes. We still learn, even now, we still learn. No one will say that I'm, I'm, I'm perfect, but it's an opportunity for us to grow and an opportunity for us to, to share ideas as well and also to, to impart the knowledge uh, that we have to um, the, the current generation as well. And getting back to uh, the football part of the NetBank Cup, you're a NetBank Cup 2023 ambassador. It's been something you've been doing. This is a competition that puts David versus Goliath. We have seen the most wonderful tournament so far. I mean, Dundle stars. But what have been your highlights in the NetBank Cup? For this I'm a fan of, of small teams. Because <laughs> um, this is the only uh, cup that gives uh, you know, unknown, um, an opportunity to play against their idols, to, to play against big teams. And each and every season, you know, that small team will always cause an upset. And, um, you know, in this year's edition, um, it's Dondo Stars, uh, you know, 10 as well. Um, this is the exciting chapter where they've won um, against two uh, PSL teams. And I hope that they continue. You know, it's a great uh, story to tell. And I'm happy that you know, three players from Dondo Stars, including their coach, you know, they were part of my tournament um, as well, not so long ago. Nice. So it's a great platform as well. 
and I hope they will continue and they'll inspire others as well. You know, to follow their dreams, not to give up, you know, and ignite that lost hope uh, from you know uh, players in the whether it's a rural or disadvantaged um, uh, areas. And I think that's the nice thing about the NFA Cup. You know, that story that you've just told us about Dondal Stars and your tournament brings this whole competition into full circle and, and making sure that the NFA Cup is It's for everyone. It's for everyone. <laughs> and Stiga, uh, we've got a lot of uh, footballers here who've played the NFA Cup, NFA Cup winners. Who do you think is going to be the Net Bank Cup 2023 champion. Yeah, I'm putting you on the block. Well, firstly, I'd love Dondal Stars to go all the way. <laughs> and I must and they share, can. And I must share this with you is because um, I, I actually commentated their first game against Supersport and the nicknames of each player. And that's why this competition is so special, is because you get a Teko there. There's a, there's a nickname Teko. There's another Talda <laughs> he, he was man of the match. But what stood out for me, and this is a net bank cup for you, is I had a conversation with the coach. And yes, we say it's a chance for the players um, uh, to, to play against the best, but it's a chance for the coaches to come up against the best coaches. McDonald, Makubit. That's correct. And I had, a, I had a, a chat to say, coach, what formation are you playing? And what he shared with me, let me, it let me know that this team is coached by somebody that loves football, that understands football, that wants to improve himself and he said we're starting with a 4-3-3 it might change we're going to play the wing the wing is a little bit inverted we'll then use overlapping fullbacks and you know what i said this is not only the competition for the players this is for the coaches this coach will get a platform you know and how they behave on the sidelines as well tells me that there's a future for a lot of those players and a lot of those uh, uh, coaches um, because there's, I think there's a technical staff of three and they're giving them, each coach is giving them an opportunity to do the interviews with a different game as they progress. So I think that's just a brilliant story and that's what the Netbank Cup is about. But to answer your question, I do think <laughs> that Stellenbosch, Teko, Stellenbosch can do something. Thank you. Stellenbosch FC top goal scorer so far with nine goals. That's what's up. Incorrectly. Uh, Teko, when it comes to the Netbank Cup competition, I think it's been uh, a competition that has been with us here in South Africa for so many years, brought up so many stars. How could we ever forget Power Lions FC? Uh, but your best memory of the Netbank Cup competition? Uh, let me start with the worst. The worst was we lost uh, at, at London Stadium against Supersport, my first trophy. Um, it's Sundance that we were supposed to win. We lost the final. That's the worst. Let me start there first. And to win it in, in PE, sorry guys, to win it in PE was, it was amazing. And, uh, and, and I, think, I think the best memory for me is to see players, because at the time there was a uh, Medbank Cup P on a team, where players would be selected and trained with, 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 uh, with the PSL teams. I've seen a lot of players being signed from that. And for me, a player that uh, was a late bloomer in the PSL that got an opportunity late, to see those guys being given an opportunity at an early stage, for me, it's, 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 um, it's a good thing to see. And also to see all those teams that are in the lower tiers to play against the big guns, the big boys in the PSL, to get signed. To see Mkani Somayo now in Cape Town City, discovered in the Netbank Cup, Modiba, you know, there's a lot of players that have been discovered in the Netbank Cup. And for me to see the continuity of seeing this player has been given an opportunity, like Stiga said, as much as it is a competitive space, but I think as an underdog, you want to have an equal chances of advancing into this tournament, and this uh, cup competition will actually give you that, because you know that there's no way you're going to have a friendly match against Sundowns or Chiefs. You know that there's no cup competition that will give you that opportunity to play against those big guns, but this tournament actually gives you that. And Imagine Dondola how they feel about Orlando Pirates right now. You can imagine the preparation started when the fixture came out that they're playing Orlando Pirates. You can imagine the excitement of the young boys. Because I was once that young boy knowing that uh, there was a cup competition that uh, we were, uh, were going to play um, KZ Chiefs at FNB. I didn't sleep for two days because I was, I was, the game was playing in my mind. I was so ready for that game and uh, I think that's when Coach Peter spotted me and wanted to sign me from there. But those are the opportunities that has been given to all these players that have been playing 
in this tournament. And for me to see the growth of that, as much as we know that in South Africa we're still complaining about the development structure, we're still complaining about opportunities for players to be given, and this cup competition actually gives you that. Not only that, you win that, you play continental football, which is very, very important. We know that not everybody's going to play, have an opportunity to play in the national team, but that continental football, it, it, it helps you so much, because when you come back and play in the PSL, that experience is, is priceless. That's fine, Tatu, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, Donna, my uh, co-host. <laughs> um, so when it comes to the Nepal Cup 2023 competition, obviously it has been absolutely fantastic and I hope you've all enjoyed it. I was going to ask you, Dan, a question, but uh, the mic is too far. What I will do, though, is that uh, this is an opportunity for members of the media to have their own uh, questions for our panelists. That is Dane, Tego, Stiga, and Sipiwe. If you do have any questions, the mic will go around. Put up your hand, uh, say your name and your organization, and then we'll have questions. Also, just to know, we will be having a second panel, uh, of course, chatting about our other Net Bank Cup 2023 ambassador, that's Coach Peter Musimani. So, members of the media, thank you so much. If you've got any questions for our panelists, uh, we can start now. How's it, guys? Uh, my name is Musimani, so uh, I just wanted to ask. Ushaba, uh, you said you've been planning for your retirement uh, since the start. Have you actually retired and what, what is next for you? We're still waiting to hear what is the, what is the next step in your journey? Each retirement? <laughs> <laughs> the football retirement or? Yeah, the football retirement on the field. Okay, I'm not yet retired. Um, but once that moment comes, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm very much involved um, uh, with my foundation, um, which we launched uh, back in 2013. Um, we've been focusing on uh, sport development and also integrating a bit education and social and life skills as well so that's that's my space that's my um, um, role that i'm playing in, in, in sport development and we've had um, you know so much success over the years like i said now that uh, the three players that are now playing in the net bank and uh, cup that played in the tournament uh, i think it was two years ago if not last year including the coach um, um, those are the players that we gave them, you know, um, the platform to play. And um, there are also the students that we've also helped them with, with uh, buzzers as well. Um, there's programs where we also help uh, coaches to, you know, um, further their knowledge uh, in terms of um, going to coaching courses as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a holistic uh, program um, that we, we try to help and also um, show these youngsters that um, sport is very broad. There's so much that you can uh, do in sport, um, you know, uh, from the business side of you, other than playing. San Malani, my name is Mbali Mbata, um, from Zanzi Post Lady Online Magazine. I just wanted to ask, um, I think I'm posing this question to the whole panel. Really. Um, we have all seen soccer stars that a lot of us grew up watching, a lot of us grew up admiring, and then at some point they fizzle out because of drugs and alcohol and all the fast cars and things like that. But you guys have all given your stories as to why you didn't fall for that trap. So what I wanted to find out is, um, as you were mentioning, Obuti, Coach Peter has been helping you guys, giving you guidance. Is there some sort of intervention program that is done um, to help those players, or are they just left to their own devices? Thank you. Okay. Well, um, for myself, I think 
Uh, life skills is important and I hear a lot of footballers say that um, they, they've not been taught life skills. I think life skills is going to school and being in class, being given a project like homework and actually doing the homework. So you'll find the, one that, the ones that said that um, they weren't taught life skills before becoming footballers is perhaps the ones, if you really look back, uh, they didn't do well at school, they were sitting behind the class when they were supposed to sit inside the class. So I think life skills comes from school. You know, your parents send you to school and you go to school and you come home and you do your homework and you go back to school tomorrow. You do your tests, you're handling your assignments. If you are given a task and you're able to do it, that's probably part of life skills for me and that's how I grew up. You know, so I don't think there's enough emphasis. I think there's still interventions, but I think that comes from grassroots. I think there's a lack of, of, of knowledge being shared uh, at grassroots. I think I was fortunate enough, I think we are fortunate enough sitting over here to have had a mentor, someone like a mentor, not only a coach, but a mentor like Coach Pizzo from a very, very young age, you know, and Coach Pizzo had his own problems when I, when I came to Super Sport, he had to manage 35 players, and some of those players would go to the left when they're supposed to go to the right, you know, and there's not enough emphasis, I, I, I would say, in the development side of things, I was fortunate enough to come from the School of Excellence, where I had development coaches like the late coach Mandla Mazibuko, coach Sam Mbata, who was at Sundowns now. I think those coaches, before sessions, they would impart knowledge, and if you've listened, and you've grasped it, then it would have worked. I'll make an example, not to mention any names, but there was players at the School of Excellence that would go on and, and go to Sundowns and go to different teams, but the common denominator with them is, is the same players that probably wasn't listening when they were supposed to listen. So when they went out into that environment, they didn't know how to behave. And then they would blame it on the lack of life skills. And I feel that is wrong. I think there was an opportunity for you to learn if you just listen from a younger age then maybe things would have been different for those players who fell a little bit to the wayside. But not to judge them, I'm just saying that there's not enough emphasis on, on uh, life skills uh, growing up and teaching players on how to behave, when to behave, when to listen. And I think the most important thing is to listen, to understand, not just listen because someone is speaking. Uh, my name is Kamakhan Mohali from Power FM Sports. Uh, this is a question to both Shaba and uh, Donna. Um, what is it that you keep doing uh, that makes NetBank Cup, you know, maintain the relationship that you guys have? I mean, even in the last campaign, you were the ambassadors, and yet again this campaign, I mean, you are ambassador. So what is it that makes NetBank Cup, you know, want to maintain the relationship with you guys to keep you as ambassadors? For I think that's the question for NetBank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Shabba, do you have an answer? <laughs> And, um, I think uh, probably maybe the Net Bank um, representative will be able to answer it, but just fortunately they've been given this opportunity to share our stories using Net Bank as a tool. You know, it, it is a financial um, conversation, something that in football we never really have to speak about. Uh, and then to share our experiences as well, to be vulnerable in front of you, to share our own experiences as well. We're trying to create that conversation going, especially for the young ones that are still playing, that it's okay to have. Um, conversations about money, it's okay to, to make mistakes, but don't, don't dwell, but don't sit there. Bounce back, be able to bounce back, and also learn from the mistakes that you've done. So we the, we the people that actually maybe been given an opportunity to speak about it. I'm sure there's a lot of other footballers that can actually have the same conversation that we do, which is probably maybe in the, the most fortunate space. Sharing is caring, James. These are the small decisions that we make to make sure that uh, we stay together and in cognizance. Thank you so much to our panel. We really do appreciate it.